What's going on Jets fans? Welcome back to another video here on Pig City Hockey. This is going to be recap reactions for game 41 out of 82 for the Winnipeg Jets 2021-2022 season. And this was a crazy game because we won, and I really did not expect us to win this game. We beat the St. Louis Blues by a score of 4-1, uh, one of those goals being empty netter. And this game was kind of all over the place, and I liked it, I didn't like it, but again, at this point, I'm not going to really complain about criticism with the Jets. I'm just going to be looking for some positives because we know what the Jets are. The Jets really aren't a playoff team. They haven't been all season long. Just because they've been able to put some stretches together where they've looked competent doesn't mean that they're this great team. Coaching has been a constant issue for years, even with the change behind the bench with Paul Maurice resigning and Dave Lowry coming in. The roster lineup questions, who do we use, who we don't use, prospect usage, all all these multiple different reasons about why the Jets have been the way they are have kind of put us to where we are right now. They're the, there's just so many different straws you can pull out for why the Jets are here. But in a game like this, it was kind of a winner or winner lose. Like this was the this was the season on the line is the best way to put it. And that sounds weird. And I'm not saying all of a sudden because the Jets won this game we're going to be on a win streak and get back in that playoff hunt because the odds are not in our favors. But that being said, there were a lot of positives in this game to pull from. A lot of negatives, but a lot of positives too, and positives that we need to see. And that being youth playing extremely well, and also just having a good kind of consistency at times. This wasn't a perfect game for the Jets. It never really is and hasn't for a long time. But there were times where I felt like they were kind of consistently playing a good game. At times, they did get dominated. But what it really came down to was the fact that we needed a goaltending change. Connor Hellebuck had been in net for way too long. He needed a break. He had been on a losing streak. It just it had not been a good time to be Connor Hellebuck. Eric Comrie comes in. Hasn't played since the loss against the Vancouver Canucks on December 10th. The game that I was at. The game that Blake Wheeler went down with an injury. He had his best game of his entire career today. I will easily say that. This was Eric Comrie's coming out party. He's had a really good this season. He's been... I did not... I'm not going to lie. You guys know. Going into the season, I thought backup goaltending was the weakest part of the Jets. Eric Comrie has proved me wrong, and I could not be happier. I just didn't think that he was the best backup of choice for the Jets. He's proven me wrong, and I couldn't be more happier because he was fantastic tonight and has been pretty damn good all season long. You go back to even when I was in Winnipeg when I came out for the trip with the uh, Chicago games, D uh, Dallas, all those wins he put together in early November, those were great games. He played very well in there, and the team played well in front of him, and that's exactly what we had tonight. The team played pretty well in front of Eric Comrie, not the entire team. I'm going to go out and say this right now, get it off, get it all the way early. Mark Scheifele is invisible and has been for a long time, and I was very disappointed in his play tonight because it felt like Pierre-Luc Dubois stepped up. It felt like Kyle Connor stepped up. It even felt like PLD, uh, and, and excuse me, I said PLD, I meant to say Pionk there. The P's confused me. Either way, they seemed like they had more of an, an urgency. They were like, hey, we need to try to prove ourselves to everybody watching right now. Fans and management and coaching staff, we have been cr crap. Even though Kyle Connor and these guys have been good, the team itself hasn't been playing the best. But they came out and had an urgency that I haven't seen on this losing streak. Mark Shifley did not. Blake Wheeler did not. And that's very sad because those are the guys wearing letters on their jerseys. And when you have a game like this where the important core leaders of this team don't step up and all these other people do... That says a lot about the direction and where this team is going. Not to mention the fact that the youth tonight was incredible. Cole Perfetti is just, every game, I like this kid more and more and more. He is so damn good with the puck. It just It's just so funny because, like what, two, three months ago, he wasn't NHL ready for most of the fan base. That's how most of the fan base thought about him. And now he has been insane for us. Even on the losing streak, Cole Perfetti has been like the only shining star on this team. Maybe Kyle Connor, I, you know, you can say that. I know he's been good. But when it comes to like actually having something to root for and be fun with in a losing streak, Cole Perfetti has been like the only thing that's really kept me going in these games. And tonight, it wasn't only just Cole Perfetti that got me excited because Villa Hinola had an amazing game tonight. Villa Hinola got paired and moved away from Nathan Bolge. He was with Neil Pionk for a lot of tonight, and they both looked the best they've looked in a very long time. Neil Pionk has had a down year this year. We all know that. He's not playing to where he was the last couple of seasons, and I think part of that is because of the lack of chemistry with Brendan Dillon at times. Maybe Villa Hinola and Neil Pionk, even though that seems like a weird pairing because they're both very similar in playing styles, maybe that's something that the Jets should try out and run with for a little bit. If you can get both of those guys going, we know how good Villa's been in the A and in every other league of hockey we've seen in the last couple of years, even in tournaments. He's been fantastic and a top defenseman uh, for his age group for a couple of seasons now. And Neil Pionk was very underrated and has been very, very consistent and only gotten better with the Jets since that trade went down when he came over from the Rangers. 
you have a game tonight against St. Louis where all of these elements that have been dragging the Jets down were kind of, you know, they were there kind of way. Mark Scheifele's poor play, Blake Wheeler. But you had a lot of youth and new types of line combos and pairings step up and carry this team. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe rest Connor Hellebuck for a, a little bit. Ride out Eric Comrie. You have nothing to lose at this point. Absolutely nothing. This was a game where I ex most of the fan base probably expected a loss. St. Louis has been, even though they've been losing a little bit lately, they're a very good team. Uh, I believe they're second in the central, if not in the top three, definitely. I don't have the stats open on my, uh, um, standings open on my screen. I should have. But they're a good team, and the Jets really dominated them for a lot of this time. And they didn't play great tonight, St. Louis, but that, again, they were a better team than on paper and recently with their record than what the Jets have been. And it didn't matter because you had all these different elements that haven't really, that have been there and have been good, but really stepped up and took leadership roles tonight when none of the actual leaders did. I think it says a lot that you even have diehard Wheeler fans that are kind of questioning whether or not this leadership group wearing the A's should continue to wear letters. Paul Maurice is gone. He's kind of the one that, you know, you, obviously the room sets who's the captain. They listen to certain, you've listened to certain guys and whatnot, but so does a coach. The coach enforces that, you know, okay, this is the captain. This is the guy, blah, blah, blah. They're the ones, they're the ones that basically give out the C most of the time. Maybe if we're going to keep Dave Lowry around or whatever the situation might be, we need to talk about giving over a new change in leadership. I just don't see these guys. Wheeler and Shifley needed to step up in this game, and they didn't. Everyone else that has been good stepped up past them and showed and just showed how good they can be. This game, I don't even care about really the win. It doesn't matter to me. The standings, none of that matters to me. And I don't even need to go in depth about how we played because, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. What matters the most is what we saw from all these young players, all these guys that have been good on the Jets for a while, but not been the leaders step up and take that role. That's something that we desperately needed, and it felt like we got that tonight. And that's with a backup goaltender in net. Ah, it, this was a great game from that standpoint for some change. Do I think this is going to last? I have no idea. They're going to have to. I'm going to have to wait and see. I'm not going to say anything about the Jets. I I literally thought this game would probably be around a 4-1 loss because let's not forget that the, before there was a commercial break, the Jets were losing this game one nothing by a great goal on Vladimir Tarasenko on the power play. I thought it was over there. I bet most of you guys did too with how we've been playing, but the core guys that have been good on this team, not the leadership, but the core surrounding talent, they stepped up and kind of propelled us into this win. And that's insanely important for trying to snap the streak and just also change the identity of this club. I am still 100% on a retool. I still think that this season is a write-off for multiple different reasons, but that doesn't mean that this has to be a season wasted completely. And I know that sounds weird because it is a wasted season when you're spent to the cap and you don't make the playoffs, but... There's just some way that I can see this season ending with some pauses if we can see youth play like they did tonight and have them playing for the last couple of weeks. And we see the good player, like the PLDs, the Kyle Connors, the Nikolai Ilus when they get back, Neil Pionks, even Eric Comrie to an extent. If these guys step up, that is huge for the Jets because the core leader groups, the Wheelers, the Shifleys, Josh Morrissey even lately, they are not stepping up. Nate Schmidt tonight was incredible. I really like Nate Schmidt, and a lot of you guys have been talking about him, and I still think that Nate Schmidt is a better keep than Josh Morrissey at this point. I, I really do. There's a new wave of Jets hockey coming, whether it happens at this season with selling off, this offseason, or whatever the course of this season might be. Some type of change is coming with this franchise. I can feel it, and I think it's good for the best. There's no point on getting angry anymore at this season because it's basically a write-off. And if the Jets can somehow get into the playoffs, I will be shocked. If the Jets make the playoffs, I don't even know what I'll do. I will. Do, uh, if the Jets make the playoffs, I will buy a Nathan Beaulieu jersey. I I'm not even joking. Uh, you know what? I don't. I'm, I'll buy someone even worse than Nathan Beaulieu. I don't care. I would do like. It won't happen, but either way, this team has a lot of problems, and tonight they had those problems still be there, but they had so many other players that have been good step up and get past the levels that they've been at, and that propelled us to this win. We have as fans to thank those players, and as also fans of this team and that are wanting change, we need to move Blake Wheeler or Mark Shifley. It has been, it's more prevalent than ever. These guys will ref are refusing to step up. I don't care what you say. Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler have all the questions put on them. And Mark Shifley's response, oh, we don't have an identity. We don't have this and that. Then make an identity. 
Play better. Do something to propel this team to that some type of consistency. Whether or not it be, you know, a couple games and losing mediocrity, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Just something. Some identity, Mark. If we don't have one, give us one. And they refuse to do that when we have all these other players stepping up. Mark Shifley was touted to be the future captain of the squad when Blake Wheeler retired. Ask any fan of the last ten, well, eight years. I think that they would all almost agree with that statement. Hell, some people thought that even Mark Shifley would get the C after Andrew Ladd left. I always thought that that was insane, but that was a small majority, minority of people, excuse me. I really think that there's not a, there's not a definite captain on this team right now. You could argue PLD, you could argue this and that, whatever. I think we need to kind of, I don't want to say strip Blake Wheeler of the C, but you know what, screw it, let's do it. I think we should just strip down the, the C's. Roll out some A's, strip the letters off of these guys' jerseys because if their own words of not, or you know, if they're if they're just going with their own words, we don't have an identity, we don't have this, we don't have that, we're not this, we're not a contender, blah blah blah. There's so many things going on wrong. If that's their mindset and they still can't do anything to change this, then they've lost the room, and not only lost the rooms, they've lost that identity as themselves as NHL players because that's not what an NHL player does, especially a captain, especially an alternate captain. Change is coming to this franchise, whether it be trading, playoffs, drafting, I don't know. But something will happen with this franchise. It has to, because this game kind of showed that. You had all these other players stepping up and being leaders, while the same leaders that have been crap all season do nothing to get better. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this win because it hasn't been a while. It's been over, what, two weeks since we got a win. So I'm pretty happy that I got to enjoy a win on my Saturday morning. Happy Hockey Day in Canada to all you Canadians out there. I know it can be hard to enjoy the day with all the stuff on the news, but try to enjoy the day and enjoy some hockey if your team is playing. I'm pretty sure every Canadian team is playing, but either way, I digress. Have a great rest of your day. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and check out all the other affiliated links down in the description below, as well as subscribe to CFL Central. We've got a very exciting play player interview coming out next Saturday, or well, actually, probably next Sunday, but interview will be happening on Saturday. But either way, stay tuned for those announcements. Go check out the links in the description, and you will be able to find out more about that when we get closer to those dates. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Jake from Peg City Hockey. Have a great rest of your weekend, and go Jets go!